right there. Alright. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Got some nice little background wake traffic going on here. Little double trouble tubes. We got tubers and wake boats and walleyes. Oh my. There we go. It is late summer transitioning into early fall. September's here. How is that even possible? And right now, walleyes are kind of everywhere. You can catch them doing a little bit of everything. I almost call it junk fishing. Bopping around, doing different techniques in different locations. So let's run through where we're finding walleyes right now and in the coming weeks, the types of spots that are gonna hold fish now through that transition into fall. I'm gonna cast back at that pot of fish first though. If I didn't uh, have my drop shot bury into the top of my foot, I would throw that in there right now. That was mo that's money, dude. That <laughs> Oh, 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 naughty. That was naughty. Did you see that? Is that a walleye? Well, regardless of what it is, it's here doing the same thing, eating, feeding. Might not be a walleye. Uh, my favorite spot, number one right now, is not necessarily a spot, but it's where the cabbage weeds and coontail meet and mix and taper off. And it could be like right now, we're on a long extending point. I'll take that to Mr. Camera Guy. That's a nicer fish. We're on a long point that tops off in about 10 feet of water, surrounded by that 25 foot stuff. And there's tons of weeds up on top in about 10 feet of water. And that cabbage usually runs, you know, like eight, 10, 11 feet on most lakes. And then you got a little strip of coontail weeds deeper. And where those taper off, it is a highway for fish. But the thing is, it could be on the edge of a big feeding flat. It could be on a deep hump. It could be a long extended tapering point like this. But where that weed wall just, you'll see the big weed wall and it stops and where those weeds kind of taper off, fish ride that edge, roaming it, looking for bait. Usually if you find one, there's a whole bunch there with it. A little, little, little snippet of cabbage. Greener the better. There, I want those. I'm not really sure how far, cause I got that freaking zoom bubble going on. There we go. Oh yeah, we flying up. Dude, these things are so dirty. They look like piranhas or bass, the way that they're just up, down, all around. You'd be like, there's no way those are walleyes. Now, if I would get bit. Now he's swimming at the boat. Dang it. Come on up and play, buddy. Oh, he ate it. There we go. So right now, I'm just using a jig and a crawler. Down and dirty, because you know what? Sometimes I just want to catch a bunch of fish because dog days of summer, Fish were fussy, you're working your butt off. And right now, if I can get bit and set the hook a bunch of times, I'm gonna do it. So a little 316 sounds VMC net rig jig with a crawler, eight pound floral leader on some 10 pound braid, have at her. You can catch fish shallow to deep anywhere in the lake doing that. But there is a number of different presentations in this type of scenario that I run through. I usually have three, four rods on the front deck of my boat stuff that I cycle through. And so if I wanna throw a little bit deeper into those weeds, 
I don't want to be messing around with a crawler and rebaiting all the time because you got bluegills, bass, weeds, walleyes that are biting short, whatever. I'm gonna throw a Ned rig, a little Crush City Ned BLT on the same 316 ounce jig head. And that lets me throw up a little bit deeper into those weeds, snap it out of there, fish a little faster, get those aggressive bites. On the opposite end of that, sometimes I want to be targeting kind of that outermost uh, line of fish where the weeds taper off. That's when I'm running a drop shot. 12, 18 inch dropper, a little night crawler on there, fishing fast, but once it's down there, you're fishing slow. And a lot of the times this time of year, late summer, transitioning into early fall, you got this clingy weed down on bottom, on the bottom of the weed edge. Sometimes it's like that black moss stuff, and then other times it's just clingy stuff you can't snap off of your bait. So having it get clung on to your drop shot, but knowing that your bait is fishing clean up above it is so key. And so I don't think there's anything better than a drop shot when it's on those outside edge fish that are all within a few feet of bottom. 3 8 ounce VMC, that bell-shaped sinker, just because it's universal, rocks, weeds, whatever, that bell profile comes through everything. 3 8 ounce is heavy, but what it does is it lets me cast baits down to bottom within a couple seconds, and then I can fish slow. Five, 10 seconds of wiggling around, slowly dragging, not getting bit. I'm reeling in, fat and casting again, and working along the edges of this stuff. And the reason being, if you catch one, this time of year, there's almost never just one walleye up on these weed edges. Yes, if you're throwing it suspended fish, whatever, then you got one here, one there. But this type of structure, if you catch one, there's normally four or eight or six or whatever. There's in, there are little pods. And when you get kind of on the spot on the spot, like right now, it's the very tip of this point is where they're loaded up. That's because you've got three, four fish over here, three, four over there, and they're roaming that weed edge, chasing bait around, and then congregating on those, like the best spot on the spot, you know? So milk that for all it's worth until you stop catching fish, and then just fan cast around. And when you get bit, cast straight back in the same area, beat it up, and then keep moving when you're not getting bit until you cross paths with walleyes that look like piranhas and fly up and eat. So, cool thing about these fish is they're gonna be here literally now all through fall. And another bite that's going on right now, if you can see, that's a big old suspendo fish just off by himself out over nothingness. So that's another bite that's happening right now where we're finding these schools of fish on the edges, but you gotta keep your head on a swivel and don't be afraid to make those casts out over the deep water, especially obviously if you have forward facing. Look out over your shoulder, scan around. You're not gonna see as many fish, but when you're on these big pieces of structure, a lot of the times just out, you know, 10 feet, 20, 25 feet down, there'll be one blob or two blobs. And those are typically overs, over 20 inches, some of the biggest fish in the lake, but it's not a numbers game. There's one here, one there, and it depends on the day. Sometimes one in 10 of them bite your bait, sometimes one in 50 of them bite your bait. But it's cool because we're kind of fishing in the same area, but two completely different patterns for two different calibers of fish. <clears throat> there we go, coming up, flying up. Eat it, eat it. Why you put the brakes on? These things are all over it. I don't know what it is, like I said, Sometimes, well, sometimes half of them bite. Sometimes it's literally one in a hundred. It's so strange, but typically I cycle through baits on the suspended fish just like I do on the shallow weed line fish. Jigging a crawler is tough to beat. It's versatile. You can fish it anywhere in the column. That's the reason I don't like throwing a slip bobber because you're constantly playing with that depth. And by the time you adjust it, the fish is at a different depth. So. I'm cycling through jigs and crawlers for the suspended fish, a mooch minnow on an eighth ounce or 3 16 ounce tungsten head. The reason for that, you can make long casts and cast 100 feet. You try to cast a night crawler over 60, 70, and uh, usually it's falling off. <laughs> but when the fish are in the right mood and they're actually chewing and they'll hit that mooch minnow, you can just be so much more efficient making casts of fish and moving and getting those aggressive ones. And if those two fail, I will throw a jig and wrap at them, usually a number seven. And you gotta kind of read the mood of the fish. Either I'm slowly kind of controlled falling it and popping it above their head to see if they come up, 
Or a lot of the times too, you can let it just crash right down past them. But also, if you're in over 25, 30 feet of water, I don't want to catch a fish that's down that deep and possibly have bear trauma, kill the fish, hurt the fish. So that's why I'm usually only casting at those fish that are 10 to 20 feet down over that deeper water. And what a lot of people might not know is a big reason for that is the water's just still 70 degrees. We've had a thermocline, which is basically, you've got this warmer water with more oxygen above this kind of invisible barrier. And below it, you've got colder water, but low oxygen levels where fish and bait fish just can't live on a lot of lakes. And so that's why you'll see fish kind of all at maybe 20 feet down, whether you're in 20 feet of water or 60, 60 feet of water, they're kind of all on that same line. That's because that's where the bait fish is. If you crank your 2D sonar sensitivity all the way up, a lot of times you can see that line of that colder, denser water. Once we push into fall and temps start dropping, water temps, and start getting down into the 60s, uh, low 60s, and then you've got like a turnover that happens and basically water temps and oxygen levels are kind of equal throughout the whole column. That's when you've got fish all over, like those fish that people are catching rigging chubs out deep and they're down by bottom. But also another good bite happens up real shallow that time of year, up in five, seven feet of water. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, but don't forget to look out off the edges of this structure for those suspended fish. You're not gonna get as many, but when you get one, it's gonna be a higher end fish. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Oh, look at the one coming up from bottom. <laughs> they like it the way the Ned Rig taste. <laughs> that was so sick. Dude. And that's why you keep a Ned Rig handy. To pepper around up top. Well, we are gonna wrap this up. The fish are chewing. These are a couple of the spots where we've been catching fish right now, as of late, and will be for the next couple weeks here, basically all the way into fall. Give me that back. That one stinks. Got one of them crawfish pooping ones. <laughs> See ya. Nick, I just want to say, talking to Nick now, I really appreciate you holding the camera instead of holding a rod, because I'm having a lot of fun, man. I promise I'll return the favor sometime. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> oh.